Sydney is on sale and Adelaide's on sale. More dates coming soon. Let's get into the show. Grab your tickets, loosebeers.com. All right, that's done. I'll export that, go downstairs, get coffee, come back up, upload, then we can leave. And we're back. Today, I wanted to go to Rottnest Island, but I kind of stupidly didn't realize that you had to book tickets pretty far in advance. Uh, it is a Sunday today as well. I thought, I don't want to go to like a tourist attraction on a Sunday. I reckon we'll do Rottnest Island on like a Wednesday. I think it's going to be pretty not busy then. Also, I'm tired from the shows. So today, instead, we're gonna go check out Scarborough Beach, which apparently is one of the best beaches in the world. Uh, my, my mate Grilly keeps telling me, you have to go to Scarborough, you have to go to Scarborough and take your, sho your shoes off and walk barefoot on the beach. So we're gonna do that. Uh, it's like 29 degrees today, so I've just covered myself in sunscreen and I'm wearing the wife pleaser. We'll do a fit check in a second. Um, I've got my Speedos on, and we'll swim at the beach, or I've seen they also have like an outdoor lap pool. So we might do there instead. I don't know, I think I'm just gonna walk around. I don't really know anything about it. It's like a 20 minute Uber trip from where I'm staying. Uh, and yeah, let's go. I've had some coffee. I'm just uploading the podcast right now. So let's get out of here. This is a free day, no show tonight. So we can do whatever we want. And we've got no show on tomorrow as well. So let me know what I should do tomorrow because uh, yeah, man, couple free days in Perth. Fit check. We've got the, uh, the wife pleaser, which I'm really filling out. I'm putting on weight. I'm looking, I'm looking good, okay? This is the heaviest I've weighed like my entire life. It's good. Uh, slutty little shorts. And then we've got even smaller Speedos underneath, so. There we go. And then just for like accessories, we've got the, the necklace, which I'm probably gonna take off actually, I don't wanna swim with it. Apple Watch, and then behind us we have incredibly dirty hotel room, which uh, I still have not cleaned, I lied. I said I was gonna clean, haven't done it yet. Might do it tonight, probably won't. All right, let's go to the beach. We're here at Scarborough Beach. I've got my mic on, I hope the wind isn't too loud because it's crazy here. I'm just seeing over there, there's the, outdoor pool just here so I think I'll do a little walk uh, and then jump in the pool for some laps because it does not look busy I was thinking that I would maybe like to swim in the ocean but it looks like a crazy tide not good for laps at all so this is beautiful man very very nice check this out See, the, the tide looks really rough. I don't think I'd want to swim in that. I'd go in up to my waist, but it's definitely not good for like, you can't swim a kilometer in that. You're gonna, you'll get taken a hundred kilometers away. End up like a certain prime minister. All right, what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna go jump in the pool, do my kilometer. And then I think we'll head down on the beach and walk along there. I got a feeling though that I don't want to spend too much time here in the sun because I feel like me glowing red <laughs> and hunched over in pain if I'm that sunburned is probably not going to be very good for the stand-up clips I want to get out of this trip or the performance that I'm going to have to do, you know? You can't be sunburned under hot stage lights. That's not good. So, yeah, I'll do my swim. Uh, walk along the beach and just enjoy it, man. This is beautiful. Swim number eight complete. It's a beautiful pool there, man. It's uh, gorgeous. Dude, there was... There was uh, you know when you, in, when you get in these pools, I don't know, if you don't swim much, you may not know. Uh, <laughs> uh, you're never the fittest person, right? They have different lanes, and some of the lanes are split up. Uh, there's slow lanes, there's medium lanes, and there's fast lanes. I'm in the fast lane, which is cool, because I did start out in the slow, work my way up to the medium, and now I'm in the fast. The thing about the fast lanes, though, is there's no very fast. And I feel like 
there needs to be. Because the thing is, right, I'm in the fast lane and uh, there could be an Olympian in there with me, all right? And it puts the pressure on because they're behind you in the lanes. They're 50 metre ones, so I try to do this thing where I just try and make a deal with myself that I'm not going to ever, like, meet the person. I never want to um, be sitting there resting on one end of the lane and then they come and overlap me. Uh, but, dude, there was this chick... She lapped me at least 10 times and uh, I got in after she started. So she could have been halfway through her fucking swim. I did a kilometer. I think she did at least two in the same time period. So maybe, and she's still going. So I reckon she's still on her fifth. You know what it was? I knew I was in trouble. I knew I was gonna get absolutely smoked and embarrassed when I saw that she had a beautiful suntan because that means that she fucking she does that every day. She comes to the outdoor pool and she just smokes amateurs like me in the fast lane. But this is Scarborough Outdoor Pool, the best pool I've ever been to. I was completely not on board with the idea of outdoor pools. I thought there was like, well, if I want to swim outdoors, I'll swim at the beach. Why would I do this weird hybrid between man-made and nature? But it's actually superior. It's totally the way to swim if you want to get into swimming you've got to start at the outdoor pools dude so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to wander down to the beach and i'm going to walk on the sand for a little bit i'm going to put on as many clothes as i can bear to put on because uh i was thinking i was just going to walk around in my speedos but i checked the uv index it's really high i've like applied sun cream like three times today before i left the house before i got in the pool had a shower, dried off, and then I just put on a shitload more. But, I don't know, high UV index. I probably don't want to spend too much time here. Look how pale I am, all right? When I've got the, the suntan of that incredibly fast swimmer girl, then I might spend more than 15 minutes here. But until then, I'm too pale for this shit. So let's go to the beach, check it out. You know, apparently, the air, the wind that's currently hitting us in the face. Apparently, <clears throat> apparently the wind that's currently pummeling me in the face is from the other side of the planet because this in many ways is the edge of the world in the sense that you can swim or take a boat or fly from here and if you just went forwards, if you just went that way, you wouldn't see land until you are on the opposite end of the globe. So it's pretty crazy to think that all these waves, all this wind, You know, a lot of the stones and everything, all of that came from the other end of the globe. What's going on here? Oh, they're learning how to drive it, I think. Oh. Better than me, dude. Oh, fucking gun it, lad. Anyway, it's pretty wild to think that the air that is uh, entering my lungs and keeping me alive was sent from the other side of the planet. Isn't it just a fucking miracle that that even works? That's how life works. I need air to survive and it gets sent express from the other side of the planet to hit me in the face and into my lungs and keep me going. What a blessing. It's 
beautiful right now. Look at the sky. Does that not look like heaven? The sand is so clean as well, which is pretty rare for beaches. This is absolutely beautiful. I'm very, very happy I decided to come here. At first I was very upset that my Sunday shows got cancelled, but if I get to do this, maybe it's worth it. Anyway. As lovely as this is, the UV rating is high and I'm translucent. So, I think it's time to go. How's my collection? I'm collecting them. Back in the hotel, uh, just spent a couple hours uh, tidying, so, Pretty clean now. Filled up the bin with rubbish. There's still some things around that, because I'm still using them, but I think I'll get room service in tomorrow to uh, change the sheets and that. Um, but we're gonna go out now uh, because the sushi place around the corner closes in, in an hour, and I just spent a while editing the podcast and I posted it, and then uh, the audio was bad, so I just had to take it down, re-edit it, and now it's uploading. So I'm just gonna leave that running uh, while we go get dinner. So I'm gonna get some sushi, cause that's just like, when you're away, it's just a guaranteed winner, here in Australia anyway, I don't know about other countries, but lots of protein, it's fresh, uh, and it's cheap. And that's what we want when we don't have a kitchen. I'm getting away with without the kitchen. I don't expressly need it. I feel like also I'm kind of winning money-wise by not having the the kitchen because I'm in such a central location that I'm not using Uber at all other than today when I went to the, the beach, but I won't do that again. Um, that being said, I probably could have found a central hotel with a kitchen, but whatever. Someone, someone did say that uh, I should ask the hotel staff for a microwave and they'd probably give it to me and I think I'll try that tomorrow, we'll see. All right, let's get out of here. So I quickly skimmed through some of the stand-up footage from last night's show, Saturday night, and it felt good on the night, but dude, watching the footage back, I was fucking annihilating. I was crushing, dude. I think, I think I couldn't, on the night, I don't know, it's hard to tell them the first few times you do a show, you're so in your head of like making sure you're doing it well and maintaining your place, trying not to forget where you are. It's like, I kind of explain it as, it's like going to a big shopping center the first couple times versus when you've been there like 10, 20 times. When you've been there 10 or 20 times, you don't even need to think about where you're going. It's just in here and you can just kind of enjoy yourself walking around doing whatever you want to do. When you've been somewhere for the first time, you know, you have to kind of pay attention and you can still enjoy it and have a good time, but it's, it's a little bit harder to stay present because you're trying not to get lost, is kind of how I explain it. Or if you're in a city, you know? Like now, for example, tonight, I'm walking to the sushi joint. I know exactly where it is. I don't even need to think about where I'm going or if I'm gonna get lost. But first couple times I went, I'm like, all right, looking at my phone, where am I going? All that. So that's kind of how it was last night where uh, I think it was much better than the first night, which was good, but it's, uh, I don't know. I just fucking, I was on fire. I just watched the footage back and I was like, oh, I was crushing. Another thing I think why it was maybe a little bit more difficult to get a grasp on how well I was doing, because I knew I was doing well, but I, it, I didn't know I was doing that well. 
the way that the room is set up is I'm really close to the stairs. So the audience can't really hear it, but I can hear all the talking downstairs. It's, it's a huge bar. Talking, music, laughing, bar, noises, drinks getting served. So a lot of my energy is going into not only just performing and doing well, but also blocking out all that noise. Um, so yeah. Man. Fucking hell. Sorry. Crackhead activities going on. Um, anyway. A lot of my energy is uh, spent on also not getting distracted by that stuff, trying to tune it out. So I really feel like the next couple shows, now that I'm super comfortable and I know the material back to front and I know that the show's good, it's just gonna get better and better, which is um, very exciting. Dude, it's such a lovely night. Tonight, it's really uh, cool. Also, um, I think I'm just gonna keep the camera on automatic settings because I had a look at some of the footage that I shot at the beach today and it just looks crazy good. So I think we're gonna keep it like that. Another little tangent that I need to go on is uh, I need to buy new shorts because since the surgery, now that I can eat without discomfort and my mouth is a lot bigger, so chewing is a lot easier and I'm just awake for a longer amount of time so I get hungrier. I've put on so much weight and I reckon most of it is in my ass. <laughs> I have a huge ass right now and my shorts don't fit anymore. But you can't really see, but I am constantly pulling these ones up because they are falling down. <laughs> and it's because they don't fit properly around my dumpy. Which is a uh, really funny side effect from this surgery. You know, I thought I was getting jaw surgery. The cunt gave me a BBL. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. All right, we're almost here. And then on the way back, I'm gonna get a uh, protein shake from Coles. And then that'll do me for the night. I think, I don't know, I kind of need to edit a vlog. Because I, uh, yesterday's vlog has been shot, but it's not uploaded as of recording this. So, I don't know. I think I might have to edit it tomorrow morning and maybe just miss a day of uploading because, I mean, by the time I actually get it up, it's going to be like, fucking, it'll be like, 10 or 11 p.m. here, which will make it like 1 or 2 a.m. everywhere else. Kind of a silly time to upload. So maybe we'll miss a day of uploading, but not filming. I'm trying to work it out. To be honest, I've been pretty surprised with how consistently I've been doing this anyway. I am enjoying it as well. I hope you are too. They're really long. Um, but I'm getting heaps of positive feedback uh, along the lines of like, oh wow, this, this is long, it is slow, it is genuine, it's not like hyper cut or hyper edited, like I'm not doing things for the vlog, I'm just living my normal life and documenting it instead of doing the Logan Paul, hey guys, like and subscribe, all that. So, yeah. Feedback as always, appreciated. I don't know, I just think it's like a cool idea to just show people what it's actually like touring around being a comedian and bouncing back from tough times. All right, we're here, sushi time. Okay, got the sushi, uh, but mission fail on the protein shake because the supermarket was closed and the convenience store was closed, but that's okay. Uh, just. I think I'm just gonna crawl into bed here because tomorrow's gonna be 
I don't know, tomorrow is another off day, like I'm not performing, but it's kind of a big day because I've got a bunch of podcasts uh, organized that I'm going to be a guest on. So let me look at my little planner here, my Hobonichi Techo. What am I doing tomorrow? Sunday is nothing. All right, Monday. I'm doing, oh, I'm only doing two. I'm doing one podcast, Hard Yarns podcast at 12. And then at 5 p.m. I'm doing the Club Good podcast. Oh, and the Club Good one is really close to my hotel. And then Hard Yarns, I think, is walkable as well. So that's good. I think the Hard Yarns one is... Uh, what it sounds like. It's a bit of a, I think it's a bit of a men's mental health vibe. I think from what I've looked at, whereas Club Good's more comedy. But I'll be as funny as I can on both really. Um, and then no show. So yeah, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do in between those episodes. Cause I mean, I think they'll both, you kind of whack out two hours for both of them. So I, you know what, I might, get up early, uh, go for a swim Monday morning. And then, yeah, cause if I don't swim in the morning, I won't be able to, cause if I, if I start podcasting at 12 or finish at like two, then I'm going to have to eat. And then at 5 PM, I've got another one. So yeah, I reckon wake up early in the morning, go for a swim, do the podcast, have some food, do another podcast. I don't know, maybe see a movie. Or just come back here and edit probably, more likely. Cause yeah, I'm gonna have to, mm, actually, you know what? I kinda, I may have to skip the swim cause I need to edit stand up clips to help sell tickets. Cause I got a few good clips from yesterday. So yeah, I'm gonna write that down. What I have to do, set my alarm for like six, because I'll probably go to sleep pretty early tonight because I'm fucked. Yeah, tomorrow's a work day. It's not a show day, but it is a work day. So that's what I'll do. I'm going to get up early, edit uh, at least one stand-up clip to post on Monday night. Uh, because it's looking like the Tuesday show is going to be a little bit quieter, which is fairly normal. You know, those it's like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm so I'm shitty that my Friday got cancelled. That is annoying. But it's Australia Day. I guess they don't want to pay their staff. Although I think there's a lot going on at the Fringe Festival as well. Of people are encouraging people to cancel their shows because they don't want to have fun on that particular day. Yeah. All right. That's good. That's easy. Edit. And then tonight, I mean, right now, it, did this podcast upload? Is that finished? Yes, it's processing. That's annoying. That This episode is going to get fuck all views now because I uploaded it and then privated it. Now I've re-uploaded it. I've got to put it up on Spotify as well. All right. I think I can replace the audio on Spotify though, so it the episode won't get affected too much. Let me see, can I do that? Yeah, I can. All right, well, that's easy. Wake up in the morning, edit the vlog that I shot yesterday, schedule that, edit a stand-up clip, do a podcast. So all I need to do tonight is hit post on this podcast that's uploaded and then I can read. I'm reading such a good book at the moment. It's so fucking good. It's called Between Two Fires by Christopher, Christopher Buhlman. And it's like medieval horror. And it's, I love it. It's right up my alley. It's super dark. It's very like supernatural, religious, ghosts, demons, angels. Uh, the protagonist is really cool. 
uh, and uh, it's like a, it's about a guy called Thomas, and he's he was a knight, but then he kind of got disgraced through no fault of his own, and uh, he's found himself traveling with uh, an alcoholic priest and a girl who is either a witch or is speaking to actual angels. And in this world, God is real. Angels and, angels and demons are definitely real, but God has turned his back on earth and it's the Christian God. So Jesus was real um, and God's definitely real, but God has abandoned earth and it's just left his angels to kind of fight amongst themselves. So some of the angels have turned away from God and turn into demons and are now trying to basically prove to themselves and everyone else that God really has left. And the way they're doing that is by tormenting his creations. So all these evil angels or demons are just releasing plagues and death and war and pestilence and famine upon humans to kind of prove to themselves and the good angels that God doesn't give a fuck about um, earth anymore or even heaven. He's not in heaven either. He's gone somewhere else for some reason that's unexplained as of yet. Uh, and so there's a war in heaven and they're just trying to torture and um, destroy earth, basically. And it follows these three people traveling from... Uh, traveling throughout France. So at the moment they've got to Paris and there's, man, I won't say anything about it, but when they get to Paris, it's crazy. Um, one of the spookier things that I've read that I just blasted through on the flight here, the flight here is three and a half hours. I read the entire time um, when I, I planned to kind of have a little nap and I brought my, my Nintendo Switch because sometimes I get sick of reading, but I don't want to sleep, so I'll play the Switch a little bit. Um, I also brought a comic book because I kind of like to switch between different things so I don't get um, too locked in on one thing. In case I get bored of one, I can go to another. But this book, I read it the entire flight, and that's what I'm going to do tonight. I'm going to put this podcast up, and then I'm just going to read as much of this as I can until I fall asleep eat my sushi, got some electrolytes, and yeah, man, beautiful off day for me. Tomorrow's a work day. Today was a nice day off. Best of all, I checked myself. It does not appear to me that I'm sunburned. We'll know for sure tomorrow, but I think that's it, man. Gonna do the last step of my skincare do a little face mask, my moisture gel sleeping mask. This has really, really helped my skin heaps. Um, Cause it's still recovering from, it's still recovering from my constant use of the CPAP machine. Like if you go watch a few of my old videos, or even some recent ones, I've got this super ugly red triangle from the bridge of my nose all the way down to like beneath my bottom lip and it's the face mask that I would wear that would force me to breathe at night. Fuck, I'm so glad I don't have to wear that shit anymore. You know I used to have to travel with it and it was just the fucking worst. Like setting it up here and filling it up with water and putting it on and it just made sleeping, sleeping was already horrific and terrible for me but doing that was just like I mean, I did it because it was good for me. And even when things are difficult, if it's good for you, you, you gotta do it. But fuck, it was not fun. And uh, I'm so glad that I don't have to wear that shit anymore. Very, very, very grateful. So yeah, another great day. You know, sometimes I'm like, I'll just check the time and I just have this thing of, the, like, of, of this feeling of like, wow, I'm still awake or wow, I don't feel that tired. You know, it's 8 p.m. I swam a kilometer and I was walking. I walked a few kilometers in the sun all day today. 
shot a vlog, edited a podcast, did a bunch of work, talked to my girl, messaged a bunch of other people, organized some gigs. And dude, I'm like regular kind of sleepy at 8 p.m. I'll probably be able to read for like two hours before I finally conk. If you have a healthy body, you are so fucking lucky and blessed. And maybe the only way to fully appreciate that is to temporarily lose it. Because I certainly had no idea what I was, what I had when I had it before I lost it. And then I was like, fuck. And even then, what I was, what I was missing and what I thought I was trying to get back to uh, wasn't even a completely functioning healthy body. That was just like the less sick version of myself. Like back when I was 18, 19, I was like, man, if I could feel like that again, I would feel amazing. I feel so much better <laughs> than, than I did then. And that's awesome. And that's, that's the true blessing of all this shit that I've been through and the illness is, is just like for the rest of my life, I get to appreciate what I have and I know that things can never get that bad. I couldn't imagine, like there are obviously worse things that could happen to you, but I couldn't think of anything that would happen to me for, for a, such a sustained period of time like that awful sickness. Um, so it's just given me so much resilience and appreciation for what I have. And, uh, if you can try and find that in, in yourself, uh, you'd probably benefit a lot. Uh, and that's, I don't even know if you can ever appreciate it to the level that I can, because I've seen the other side, but if you've never seen the other side, It is, uh, would be helpful to you to imagine losing the things that you take for granted. Breathing, <laughs> sleeping, walking, things like this, things we do every day. Sight. Because you never know. But also, hopefully, it, you know, nothing ever happens to you and, and you can just fucking be like, man, this is awesome. I'm healthy and appreciate it. And then, and that's even better than being a healthy person is, is being a healthy person that like appreciates and understands, uh, and enjoys how their body functions and is grateful for it because it, you know, not everyone gets to live like that and even people who are healthy don't get to complete a normal natural lifespan things happen and it's very 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 um good and helpful to to you and your mind and your soul and your spirit to every now and then just sit and think fuck i'm so lucky to be able to experience this even when times are shit you can still find moments where you're like man as, as painful as all of this is, at least I get to experience it because not everyone does. All right, that's it. Talk soon.